Do you struggle to look left or right when you're driving? Do you have difficulty looking up at the ceiling? Or do you feel the need to lean forwards or crouch down when your low back gets sore? If so, you might have a facet joint problem and this episode will help to answer some of your questions. Facet joints can be found in the cervical, thoracic and lumbar regions of the spinal columns. That's the neck, mid back and low back. These regions are made up of several bones known as vertebra and a facet joint is made up of the superior articular process of one vertebra joining the inferior articular process of another. Each articular process is covered in a layer of lovely smooth articular cartilage that covers the bone underneath. Each facet joint is surrounded by a joint capsule that contains synovial fluid and a thin layer of something called synovium. The facet joints look slightly different for each different region of the spine and that will of course affect how they function in each region of the spine too. The cervical or neck facet joints are more horizontal, therefore they're well suited to uh, looking left and right especially, but also up and down. The lumbar facets are positioned almost vertically like books in a bookcase, meaning that rotation is quite limited, but uh, very well suited to flexion extension or bending forwards and bending backwards. The thoracic joint sits somewhere between the two. Movement is limited due to the rib cage in general. However, rotation, uh, left and right lateral flexion, and certain amounts of flexion extension are also possible at this region. As a general rule, flexion is gonna load the front or the anterior part of the vertebra and relatively decompressing or taking a load off of the facet joints. An extension will relatively compress the facet joints and potentially irritate them if they're not working very well or if there's any arthritic or degenerative changes. If we want to compress a specific side, we can look up towards the ceiling, uh, maybe bend backwards or drop into left or right lateral flexion. And these will potentially compress the facet joints in that region of the spine, so either in the neck, mid back or low back. And the importance of this will show in later episodes when we start to talk about diagnosing facet joint syndromes and also choosing therapeutic exercise and treatment modalities. So it's well worth remembering this for the future. And we'll just take a little break in the middle here to ask if you are enjoying the video, you find it useful, you know, click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, uh, leave a comment as well. You can request any specific material that you'd like us to cover and also we'd love to hear your stories as well if you do have facet joint problems or you've experienced them in the past or you know someone who has your stories will help to reassure and maybe inspire some of our viewers and listeners as well but let's get back to it degenerative joint disease is a common non-inflammatory condition that typically affects the small joints of the hands and the large weight-bearing joints the cause of degenerative joint disease is not fully known or understood at the moment, although the sequence of structural changes is very well documented, and that's what we're gonna go through today. The process is thought to be triggered by abnormal physical forces being applied to the joint articular surface, and that's where the two joint surfaces meet. Remember, we talked about the superior and inferior surfaces. And this happens in the cervical spine, the neck, the thoracic spine, the mid-back, and the lumbar spine in the low back. But we can also apply this to the hips, knees, and any other weight-bearing joint in the body. These forces alter the function of the chondrocytes. Now, what are they, you ask? Well, chondrocytes are mainly responsible for the production of collagen and what we call the extracellular matrix that maintains the articular cartilage within the joints. Therefore, if the chondrocytes are no longer doing their job properly, the integrity of that lovely glassy smooth cartilage is going to suffer. The extracellular matrix, or ground substance it's also called, becomes altered and the collagen fibres are damaged by those forces leading to fissures and crevices within the articular cartilage, with further cartilage damage such as vascular infiltration, ulcer formation or cartilage flaking and fibrillation all of which ultimately leads to a loss of joint space. The debris from the breakdown of the articular cartilage irritates the joint synovium and that causes it to thicken over time. The loss of joint space causes increased stress to the bony surfaces, 
leading to subchondral sclerosis or bone hardening as it's called and osteophyte formation which are outgrowths from the bony surface. Fissures in the cartilage allow synovial fluid to pass into the bone underneath the cartilage which over a period of time changes it to from bone to fibrous tissue and that leads to the formation of subchondral cysts. These changes can lead to a deformity of the joint surface so it's no longer flat and that can ultimately cause joint instability and subluxation. I see this quite often in the distal joints of the fingers and you might well have seen this too in either yourself or friends, relatives or members of the public. So have you got any degenerative joint disease? And in which joints do you have it? Is it in the facet joints? Or is it in a completely different area? Now, we'd love to hear your story in the comments and we do plan to try and connect with as many people as possible to help them. But in the next video, we're going to talk about what these structural changes in the joint look like on an x-ray film or MRI. So if you've got any x-rays of your own, tune in and perhaps we'll help you to recognize some of the changes we've just been talking about. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.